All right, so here we go. Reign of Terror. So this is the unfortunate aftermath of what's going to happen um, as the French Revolution continues. You know, last lecture we basically talked about the decision on what to do with Louis the Sixteenth, and of course they decided to execute him. And in January of 1793, that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, you see here the execution of Louis, here is Louis, here's the rest of Louis, uh, um, and Louis the Sixteenth is going to be executed. Um, after that, Marie Antoinette will also be executed. Of course, they're going to use the guillotine to do this, and this is just an image of the guillotine. And as all this is happening, the question is, who now leads the French Revolution? Who's leading France? And the answer to that is, of course, going to be that radical left that we had talked about when we talked about the left-right spectrum there, and specifically a man named Robespierre. So the next phase of the French Revolution, what we call the radical phase of the French Revolution, is the phase that comes during the period of Robespierre. So there's Robespierre, and we'll spend a little bit of time on him. So again, for those of you in my class, I'm hoping by now you read that primary source, right? The whole idea is you first read the primary source. If you haven't read the primary source on him, stop, right? You want to listen to the primary source first and then watch this, right? Because when you first read the document of Robespierre and you read his speeches, he does come off as this guy who's like, oh, I'm here to help the people and, you know, I care about the people and all of these things. But if you really read it carefully and you analyze it well, what you quickly discover is Robespierre is, you know, you know a monster. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. And it's interesting because he's, he's a somewhat controversial figure. There's actually people to this day who still like Robespierre and agree with what he did and said he was, you know, just doing what needed to be done. So what is his deal? Well, you know, in his speeches, as I mentioned, he talks about how he wants to create uh, uh, liberty for people and, and, and create rights for people. But he also talks about using terror to reach those ends. And one of the things Robespierre is going to do when he becomes this influential figure um, in 1793, 1794 is create this committee. It's called the Committee of Public Safety. And the job of the Committee of Public Safety was basically to go around France and find people who disagreed with his very pure view of the French Revolution. And what I'm getting at here is anyone who wasn't 100% pure, not 100%, you know, in line with his view on how to deal with things in France was seen now as an enemy of the French Revolution. So people who just a couple years earlier were like, yeah, we don't like Louis, but you know, maybe we shouldn't be beheading everyone, were all of a sudden enemies. And during the reign of Robespierre, you get what we call the reign of terror, right? This reign of terror. There's a reason we call it that. It's because in a couple year period, there's going to be anywhere between 20 to 50,000 people executed. Um, many hundreds of thousand plus are going to be imprisoned. And Robespierre was pretty much doing this unilaterally because simply people disagreed with him and his, again, very narrow view. Um, I, in many respects, I kind of see Robespierre as an early kind of Stalin-like figure, right? Uh, you know, where, where, you know, just on a smaller scale uh, or a Marx or Stalin-like figure, but just kind of, you know, Marx never got to the point where he actually had power uh, to do things, but Robespierre does. And so he does things like institute the reign of terror. He, he purged constant numbers of people. Um, he also was very, remember one of the differences, the whole issue of the church, he was very anti-church and he closed the churches in France. Uh, he renamed streets in France, any street in France that had the word like saint in it were renamed. He created a new calendar in France, and that new calendar had only re uh, secular holidays. All religious holidays were, were not allowed anymore. And so he really pushed this, this idea of anyone who doesn't agree with him is an enemy of the French Revolution and must be executed. 
Now, you know, this, so this is a very hard time. Meanwhile, the wars are still going on in France against other powers. The economy isn't going well. The harvests are still not going, going well. And so all of this is happening. And on top of that, you also have this group of people known as the royalists. The royalists were, were the ones who wanted to bring the monarchy back. Um, so you have that going on. So it, it's a mess. Um, I want to share you another story of Robespierre. And it's the story of a man named Marat. And what happens with him is also part of a, a pretty crazy little story that, that is also kind of serves to enhance the reign of terror. So who is Marat? So let me tell you this little story here. So Marat, in, who's this other lady, Charlotte Corday, associated with this story, you'll see here in a second, are two people that, you know, what's going to happen between them help fuel the reign of terror. So Charlotte, so let me start with Marat again. So Marat is a journalist, right? He was a journalist during the period of Robespierre. He was in favor of the reign of terror, encouraged it. And then there was a sweet little lady named Charlotte Corday who, um, you know, opposed it. And her husband was killed during the reign of terror. And she was very upset with Marat and, and how he... He spewed this vitriol that she argued led to the death of her husband, and so she was very upset. So one day she went to visit Marat, and Marat was often known for sitting in a bathtub uh, because he had the skin condition, and so she went to see him, and when she went to see him, she proceeded to stab him to death. And so you see this very famous um, uh, uh, portrait of the death of Marat, um, I think maybe Jacques Louis David who made it, and you know it, it resonated with the people who favored Robespierre. What ended up happening is Marat became kind of this martyr for for this radical element of the French Revolution, and of course Corday was killed, and some people argued this even fueled more uh, killings, and so things were really getting bad in France during this time period. So what's going to happen? Is it going to end? How long is this reign of terror going to continue on for? Well, let's keep going on here. So that's this quick little story of the death of Marat and how that helped fuel the, the um, reign of terror. Okay, so how does this all end? How does Ropes, what ha end of Robespierre, what's going to happen next? So the whole thing with the reign of terror, 1793-1794, I want to talk about another man here named Danton. And it's this first kind of key word you see here. And basically, this is a guy who was in favor of what Robespierre was doing, supported him for a long time. But eventually, he got to the point where he saw things were getting out of control. And he spoke up against Robespierre. One of his, you know, people who supported, yeah, Robespierre, we need to do this. We need to kill all these people. Like, yeah, we're going a little too far. And he was killed. And I think when Danton was killed, that was kind of, many historians would say, th this moment where is like, no one is safe, right? No one's going to be pure enough. No one is going to walk the line to a point where, you know, you're not pure enough and you won't be eliminated. And then people turn on Robespierre. And that's exactly what happens in 1794. The economy is continuing to go bad. Robespierre will be rounded up and he will be killed. So here we are, the French Revolution, which again started 1789. We've gone through these different phases, the liberal phase and then the radical phase. Nothing's really improved. We get to 1795 and we enter what we call the directory stage of the French Revolution. We call it the directory phase because there's a new governing body of France called the directory. The directory was the executive branch of France, composed of five men. They created a new legislature. So they got rid of Robespierre and they said, all right, we need a new kind of uh, political body. So they created another new legislative assembly. There's details in it, which I don't get into, but it had like a council of 500 and a council of elders. If you want to remember that, that's fine. Uh, but more importantly, know that there was the directory, which consisted of five men who served as kind of the executive branch. And one of them was a man named Barra. There's others as well. And now it was their job to, to try to bring order and stability to France. Are they going to succeed? And the answer is, again, a big fat no. 
um, they too are not going to succeed. There's a lot of corruption in the directory. Uh, basically, if you want something done in France during these years, you have to bribe them. Um, and there's just a continuation. There's still no king of France, right? So Louis the, the 16th is dead. Robespierre is dead. Wars are going on. A lot of people are hitting France in, in these battles and these wars. And there's a lot of stuff not going well. However, during this directory stage, for all the crazy that was going on, there was one bit of uh, hope for the French because there was while there was a lot of chaos and a lot of lost battles and bloodshed and reign of terror, there was one young military man who was on the rise during the directory phase who was having pretty good successes. And when this young man gets a little bit older, he's going to shake the French society in Europe to the core. And of course, for those of you who aren't aware, this is going to lead us to another powerful story, the story of Napoleon. And so that's going to come up future lectures. Uh, but there you go. That's a bit on the French Revolution. It's like I said, a roller coaster ride and not always very pretty. So that's just, again, a quick little survey. There's a lot more to this. You could take a whole, like I said, a whole course on the French Revolution. But I hope, you, you know, as you put all these lectures together, um, they're interesting and you're able to understand, again, the causes, why it happened. Again, in your module, you have the, the, the timeline chart. That should help you out. You can look at that as well. And that's it. All right. Thank you. Let me know if anyone has any questions. Have a great day.